bluffing on your last hand, and you were bluffing on the hand before that. Yes, and that's all. Why? For goodness sake, a man's only got two hands. Good point. How much do you bet? Hmm, let's see. How much do you have left in your pile? Thirty-four dollars. May I borrow it? Sure, here. Thanks. I bet thirty-four dollars. Okay. I have three kings. Too bad. I have a pair of aces. Three kings and two aces. That's a full house. I win. Well, you know what they say, a fool and his hair are soon parted. Can I have the $34 I loaned you? I'm a little short right now. Can I get it to you later? But I just gave it to you. Yes, but it's already invested. The wheels of industry wait for no man, and every penny invested helps to keep America's financial stability in fine fettle. You betting in on a horse? Belmont Park, second race. The horse's name is Born Loser, but don't let that name fool you. He's fast? Fast? Why, he once came in first, second, and third. Wow. How did he do that? He came in sideways. Oh, okay. You won't regret it. Now, we should get Mr. Von Philman's costume ready before he fires us. He'll be here any minute. Oh, and let's not forget that Hedda Hamper is coming to do a story on him. What's he singing tonight? Who knows? Let's just pick a costume at random. Maybe we'll get lucky. And we'll be even luckier if he doesn't sing at all. It's worth a try. You're full of good ideas tonight. I wish I had some good thoughts. Or well, just some thoughts would be nice. I have thoughts. Well, don't let them go to your head. This place is a mess. What is the matter with you two? Why do I pay you good money? Bad money would put us in jail. And we know that from experience. You were caught passing bad money? We didn't know it was bad. It looked good when we made it. I told you Lincoln had a beard. Excuse me, if you don't mind, I have an opera to sing tonight. May I please see my costume? Of course you can see your costume. Question is, does your costume want to see you? Give me my costume! Yes, sir. Here it is. This is my costume for Pinkerton in Madam Butterfly, a story which takes place in Japan. Now why would I wear an American naval uniform when I am playing a Spanish soldier in Carmen? Good question. And so is this. Why are you, a German tenor, playing a Spanish soldier? Doesn't make sense, does it? So, wear the American naval uniform, keep the German accent, play the Spanish soldier, and the whole thing will take place in Japan. It'll be a smash, a sensation. An abomination. Get me my Spanish soldier outfit! No! Yes, sir. Carmen is a great opera. I love Puccini. Carmen is pisse. Pisse! Pisse! Well, if she's busy, then I won't disturb her. Here's your soldier costume. What happened to my costume? It's teeny tiny! After I washed it, I put it in the dryer. I guess I should have read the label. That would mean you'd have to learn to read first. Oh yeah. I'll kill you! Well, at least you don't go to extremes in your violence. That's in your favor. You've ruined me! Get over here, you morons! Morons, yes. But as morons go, we excel. My mother's so proud. I hate you! Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Haven't I told you not to throw your banana peels on the floor? I didn't. I threw them on the ceiling. They only landed on the floor. Okay, then we'll let that slide. Look, he's out like a light. But the light is on. You're right. I'll have to come up with another analogy. Hmm. How about he's out like the tide? Better, but not quite what I'm looking for. How about... Who is it? It's Hedda Hamper. I'm here to interview Herr von Filmen. Uh-oh, I forgot about the interview. What are we gonna do? I have an idea. 
put him on the couch. You get underneath and speak for him. Move his arms and head, too. And put those dark glasses on him. Now, are you confident you can do this? I was born confident. Really? I was a cesarean. Hello, darling. Who are you? Me? I'm Mr. Von Philman's personal manager. Biffle's the name, but you can call me Jeremiah. Is that the first name? No, I believe the first name was Adam, followed closely by Eve. A little too closely, if you ask me. Jeremiah is a lovely name. Yes, isn't it? I wish it were mine. But you said... Said what? You can call me Jeremiah. Wow, that's my name too! It's not my name. Mine either. What's yours? Hedda. Hedda, what a gorgeous name. My father's name was Hedda. It was. It was what? Hedda. Funny, that's your name too. I'm getting a headache. Is Mr. Von Philman here? Of course he is. He's resting on the couch. Go ahead and ask him some questions, Hedda. Just make sure you stand directly in front of him. And why is that? Uh, he hears better out of his left eye. After you. Good day, Herr Von Philman. Welcome to our fair hamlet. Thanks. I'll have another one with cheese. I beg your pardon? You just offered me an omelet. The woman said Hamlet. Oh, that's down the street. We're doing opera here. What happened to your accent, Mr. Von Philman? You're from Berlin, aren't you? Um, yeah, but I've been spending time in Brooklyn trying to learn the accent for a new opera. Oh my, a new opera? How exciting. What's it called? Uh, well, it's called, um, you've heard of Rigoletto? Of course. Well, this is the sequel. It's called Rigatoni. Rigatoni? Mmm, I'd love some, but after my omelet. Tell me, what's the story of Rigatoni? Well, it's the story of a macaroni maker who comes up with a new idea. He crosses macaroni with chili peppers, hot mustard, and Tabasco sauce. What does he get? Terrible indigestion. Does he have an aria? Yes, but he can only sing it locally. Locally? Why? Otherwise, he'd need an aria code. And wait till you see the bubble machine we use in the second act. A bubble machine in an opera? It's a soap opera. Hey, I thought I was the one being interviewed. Yes, of course. Herr von Filmen, you look so tall on the stage. Would you mind standing up so I can see? Um, well, I... What's the matter? Um, he's very tired. You might even say fatigued, even exhausted. Well? Well, what? Go ahead and say it. Oh, uh... Fatigued, even exhausted. How's that? Excellent. And now I see that you have more than enough for your interview. The great Von Philman has to get his rest. Tonight he not only sings an opera, but immediately afterwards he runs five miles. Five miles? To keep in shape? No, to escape the audience. Have you heard him sing? Well, it was a pleasure to speak with Herr Von Philman, and I hope... <sighs> what the... Who are you? Uh, I'm his insurance agent. His insurance agent? Yeah, we're behind every customer. What is going on here? Who are you two? We used to work for Von Feldman. Used to work? Yes, I'd say that's a safe guess. It was nice meeting you, Hedda. If you're ever in Brooklyn, look us up. We're very well known there. Yeah, just ask any policeman. See ya. Don't take any wooden nickels. Always look both ways before crossing. Never put a gift in a horse's mouth. Horse's mouth? That reminds me. We can just catch Born Loser running at Belmont. Let's go. And where do you think you're going? Why, Mr. Von Philman, have you met Hedda Hamper, one of America's finest journalists? Why, no. I... How do you do, Herr Von Philman? The pleasure is mine. This lovely young lady is just dying to interview a big, important opera star like you. Oh! Why don't you take her to a nice secluded place and you can tell Miss Harper your whole boring life story? Yes, excellent suggestion. Very well, let's go. Ahem, <clears throat> I was born when I was quite young, during the Brussels sprout famine, and I come from a... Boy, Biffle, I gotta hand it to you. You certainly got a set at that one. Why, thank you, my dear Schuster. Like I always say, stay on your toes and they can never step on your feet. That's good. Except, uh, you got rid of Philman, and he has to sing tonight. Who's gonna do the opera? Hmm. Larry
colitis, severe colitis with meningitis is the song I sing. Halitosis done to osmosis, do you suppose this I'm a ding-a-ling? The hair and tortoise got rigor mortis, I can't afford this, my vasectomy. My girlfriend Myrtle got through her hurdle, and now her girdle's really killing me. Oy vey, oy vey, I say, oy vey, oy vey, I say, oy vey, I say, and hadi 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 hoop de doop, oy vey, I say, so come my way, because my mother's making cabbage soup. Oy vey, I say, you know, tomorrow is a brighter day. Let's all be gay, as gay as daisies in the month of May. Oy vey, I say, no time to think about the pros and cons. Oy vey, I say, support our troops and go and buy some.